Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday to you. And today we are in the conversation about transforming mental health through social work. It's a, just about our reflections about what it means to be a social worker, about how we go about charging this transformation of mental health uh, for our clients, for our communities, for ourselves. Um, and so this is this is that conversation. All of this, as we keep telling you every week, all of this leading to a conference in March that is going to be all about transforming mental health through social work. So we're, um, you know, so we're 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 super excited about how all this is leading, and we've been having these incredibly powerful um, uh, seminar sessions on Fridays at three thirty as part of our social work power certificate course. You could come to one of them. You could come to all of them. It's all fine. Just come and be in the conversation. This last week, we had this amazing, amazing group of individuals um, all taught from different walks of social work practice, from different walks of life, all talking about the experiences of imposter syndrome and how that has impacted their ability to really execute the totality of who it is that they are as social workers. And in that conversation about the experience of a lack of integration um, and, 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 and integration in terms of how, you know, there may be areas of our lives that we feel super competent um, and then areas of our lives where we don't. And so those areas of our lives that we don't feel confident, we collapse uh, social, who we are as social workers into that. Um, and then that becomes the definition of how competent we are overall. And so we had, you know, we had a, a, a one of our one of our amazing community members, um, Ellen, who's 88 years old. She's the president of of a number of different things, um, and really expressed that this is one of the things, you know, and and has her plaques and awards sort of in a box in the corner of her in the corner of her office and everybody in the room had some level of connectedness to what she was communicating about, myself included. Uh, my diplomas are in the basement <laughs> in a box. So myself included that, uh, you know, that there is this, uh, this lack of integration and what the impact of that lack of integration is on being able to truly execute who it is that we are as clinicians. And so, the question then becomes, because last time we were here, we talked about um, imposter syndrome and self-doubt. So moving the conversation forward, the questions then become, and, and so the real intentionality in all these conversations is to be able to pose questions that allow us to think um, a little bit openly and a little bit more deeply and, and pause long enough to to be able to consider what what the response to some of these questions would be and how those responses could fuel us to the next stage. So in the space of this lack of integration or this experience of self-doubt who in who you are as a social worker, perhaps that how that might translate into other areas of your life, you know, uh, these ideas of empowerment that sometimes can feel so big, in those spaces, how then do we actually lead this transformation? How does that happen? You know, how much are we investing in being able to consider the opportunities that are available to us and ones that we want to take hold of? You know, how much are we stepping outside of the box of our comfort zones and, and challenging the status quos? You know, status quos are there because they're familiar. It's easy to navigate, but it's also so easy to get ourselves sucked into it and, and do business as usual. And so, and what we know as social workers, what we know as clinicians, what we know as, as people who have boots on the ground, right? We know that the status quo stuff doesn't work um, and it doesn't work all the time, right? It has a purpose and it has a, a, a context to it. But it is not an across the board experience because if it was, we wouldn't have the fragmented level of, of mental health care currently. So it really allows us when we are when we're handling all of these things and we are and and we want to make change in systems, really taking a look, look at these kinds of questions about 
how do we confront this status quo? How do we identify it too? Because when you are so deeply immersed in whatever systems that we all operate in, sometimes we do get in, we get inducted into the status quo so much we can't see it anymore. And so, you know, how much are we willing to take the step back and get the wider lens and see, you know, am I, you know, you know, is this working for me? Number one, right? Is there something about this that is working? Is there something about this that isn't working? What could I change? Do I have a personal sense of what my values and what my mission in life is or in my, you know, in my career? Do I have a sense of what those things are and do they align with how it is I'm operating in my in 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 my role as a social worker. So those are the questions for you today. Please join us. Put something into the into the chat box and let us know what it is that you think. Uh, we'd love to hear from you, and I'd love to see you on Fridays at three thirty. Please come and join us. And uh, and again, we look forward to seeing you soon and continuing the conversation.